Hello, I'm Chris Duvon. I've been with SUSE for a bit more than two and a half years now. As part of the EI department, I am in the OpenQA development team. And I work there as a Scrum Master. I go by they, them pronouns. And I'm going to talk about a non-technical topic, which is about being inclusive and embracing diversity. I'm going to ask you about ice cream. I'm going to tell you a little bit about pronouns. I'm going to tell you a little bit about gendered language and inclusive or not so inclusive terminology. And most importantly, I'm going to give you an idea why you should care. So, what is this about ice cream? I'm going to ask a very simple question to start with. Do you like chocolate or vanilla ice cream? Think about it a moment. Maybe you're thinking, I love chocolate ice cream. It's amazing. Or maybe you're thinking, I really love vanilla ice cream. Or maybe you're thinking, I do not like any ice cream at all. Some people don't like ice cream. Some people simply don't like sweets. Or maybe you do like sherbet, strawberry flavor. Who knows, right? You might wonder, why am I assuming that you like ice cream in the first place? So, the second question. You look at a person and you're thinking, hmm, can I guess this person's gender by looking at them? And in a similar way, how do you make a guess on somebody's gender? How do you make a guess on what ice cream flavor somebody likes? You might see the comparison I'm drawing here. Maybe you should actually just ask rather than making a guess. And furthermore, there are certain speech patterns that you're used to, or that you may be used to. Like, hello ladies and gentlemen, common greeting when you invite people to something, when you start an email, when you start a conversation, a meeting. Maybe you're used to saying something like, we need a man for this job. He should be experienced. He should have worked in this field for several years. So we know he's good at his job when we hire him. Might just sound perfectly fine to you for now. So I have a few alternate versions of these phrases. Maybe you start a meeting saying hello people or simply hello or hello everyone. There's no need to assume your audience. You can keep it pretty open. You can also say something like, we need someone strong for this job. 
Remember the previous phrase? We need a man for this job. Or maybe we need someone strong for this job. Or maybe it's not actually that important if it's a man, a woman. Because maybe the important thing is that you want someone experienced. So also when talking about um, job candidates or talking about other people in, in general that have certain skills, maybe you're talking about colleagues or even friends and you're thinking I could think of somebody who's able to help but they should have certain skills to be able to do that and notice how I use the singular they I don't need to specify regardless of what I might think the potential person looks like or where they come from and the difference is if you're wondering why this matters the difference is you make your language more inclusive you leave open the suggestion that anyone can fill that position or help you out or feel welcome when you're talking to your audience when you're starting a conversation when um, when they receive your email and when they're reading it there's not much of a chance of accidentally making people feel unwelcome someone might read the way you're phrasing it and think doesn't sound like you need me the way you're describing it even if the person can help skill wise so consider that the skills here might be the thing that is more important than the particular gender of the person and you may have noticed how I was already using the singular they so they them um, and also there is a pronoun that's actually been around for hundreds of years in the English language some people uh, don't realize how um, established this actually is in modern English and how antiquated you may sound for using he as the generic default so basic examples to keep in mind are they would be able to help me out let's ask them for help or let's see what their requirements are this is basic usage and this can apply to anyone where you simply don't know what gender um, might apply an unknown person or somebody who you just don't know much about and also for this reason I recommend doing two things in line with that is one thing which I did at the start of the talk I announced my pronouns um, my pronouns being they them personally I prefer the neutral pronouns other people might prefer he him she her or even neo pronouns like 
Z there, for instance. And there's all sorts of other ones. And I'm not going to suggest that you go and learn all that much about pronouns now. But just consider that you simply don't know somebody's particular preference. You don't know what ice cream they like. You don't know what pronouns they are most comfortable with. And you probably have an interest in making them feel welcome when you're talking to them. And at the end of the day, you can always ask. And this extends to various other topics. If you would like somebody's advice, somebody's help, you can ask. If you have questions about somebody's preference, even the name somebody prefers to use. It's a really nice thing to ask. You can ask, hey, what name do you prefer to go by? What pronouns do you prefer to use? And people will feel very welcome if you ask them such things, rather than making a guess, which may or may not be correct. And I also have some examples um, in the context of user stories. So a very common thing is to, to use um, names that may be less exclusive than you realize. I'm not going to show you bad examples, I'm only going to show you good examples here. And if you're interested on my blog, I actually have a bunch more. So some of the fun ones I picked here are Alison Average writes software. Kim looks out the window when it rains. Morgan doesn't like Mondays. Or Robin loves jaywalking. You may have noticed the little pun I snuck in there. Unisex names obviously vary country by country, but these are some that I think are um, fairly broadly um, established as unisex names. And this also implies to terminology, traditional terms like whitelist, blacklist, master, slave, you may or may not know exactly what the issues are with the terms. But to keep it simple, my advice is consider that some people are not comfortable with some of this traditional terminology. And you can again make people a lot more comfortable by default by allowing um, terminology that is more inclusive, that doesn't have the baggage. It doesn't hurt to use those names in any case. It doesn't hurt you, that makes other people feel good, which to my mind is a great thing. So use terms like allow list, block list, primary, main, source, sync, big projects like the Linux kernel or OpenQA use uh, inclusive terms and maybe if you have a chance to influence that you can make this happen in more projects that you're involved with and also a couple fun facts for you know fun inclusive terminology has been a thing since um, 1994 originally coming from the music scene and the uh, singular they actually has been around for about 646 years now. So it is not that new unless you are incredibly old. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, perhaps I was able to provide some inspiration, some food for thoughts. Consider if the terms diversity, equity, and inclusions are things you want to, for instance, uh, approach at your company. 
I'm lucky to work for a company where these are terms that are very highly valued and where there's support to make everything more inclusive. And yeah, to wrap this up, here's a little to-do list. Use inclusive terminology, don't make assumptions and focus on the skills a person provides. And if you're interested, I wrote a blog post on this topic with some more specifics on this and you can also reach out to me if you have questions and I'm happy to share more thoughts on this topic. Thank you.